This is a CRT television I recently got exclusively for retro gaming. It allows me to play my retro consoles with the authentic scan lines I remembered as a kid. But for convenience, I really wanted to get my Mr. FPGA working with the CRT television. I was able to get my Raspberry Pi working and it was great, but FPGAs offer some advantages over using software emulation. The main one being controller latency. That is, the time it takes for a button press to reach the game and perform an action. So to get the Mr. FPGA working on my TV, I got on the internet and started doing some research. So I needed to find out if I could output composite video from the FPGA. The Mr. GitHub says you can output analog video from the IO board, but it only outputs RGBS, component, and standard VGA. Composite or S-video is not supported. Then, I remember the Mr. Project also added support for outputting analog video through the HDMI port by using an adapter. But it also does not support composite. This was so disappointing. This meant that I would probably need to obtain a PVM or BVM to use or a television with component or RGB inputs. Luckily, the Mr. Project has a great forum that helped me find a solution. I was led to two adapters, one from Antonio Villena and another called the Mavster MD2 on the Mr. Bits website. I ultimately chose the Antonio Villena adapter because it was available right away and had a composite port built in. His prices are in euros, and for me, the total price including shipping costs was $58.72. So after waiting about a month for the adapter to arrive, I immediately hit a roadblock. One of the requirements of the adapter is to set the VGA port to 5 volts. My IO board is a much older version that did not have the jumper installed to be able to do that. But it did have slots to solder the jumper. But instead of soldering the jumper, I decided to get a new IO board. You see, my IO board is one that has 32 megabytes of built-in RAM. And the way it's set up, I won't be able to upgrade to more RAM. I've been meaning to upgrade anyway, so this was a good time for the upgrade. Plus, being able to add more RAM will allow me to play all Neo Geo games. So I just went ahead and purchased a 128MB RAM chip and also a new updated I.O. board from Mr. Addons to help me progress in this project. When the new I.O. board and RAM arrive, I quickly opened the package and started putting it together. The process is simple. I take the I.O. board and orient it so that the VGA port and HDMI port are on the same side. Then align the pins on the I.O. board to the GPIO ports on the DE10 Nano FPGA and insert the pins into the ports. Now for the RAM. One side of the I.O. board will leave GPIO ports open for RAM expansion. If you look at the RAM, you can see one side say this side faces outwards. Obviously, you want to make sure this side is facing away from the Mr. FPGA. Just place the RAM on the free GPIO port on the Mr. After the I.O. board and RAM are installed, I plug in the Mr. and load up a game that wouldn't work with the 32 megabyte I had before. And it works. I can finally start using the analog adapter, but we need to set up a few things before we can get it working. First, you must edit the mister.ini file. On that file, make sure composite sync is set to 1. Next, on the I.O. board, make sure you disable sync on green. Just move this switch to the opposite position of the SOG label. Also, on the I.O. board, right next to the VGA port, make sure the VGA power jumper is set to 5 volts like I have here. Finally, on the analog adapter itself, set it to the type of television signal your CRT uses. In the US, where I am, TVs use the NTSC standard, so I'll set the adapter to that. PAL is usually used in European countries. Now it's time to plug the adapter to the VGA port of the I.O. board. It feels pretty secure on the VGA port, but it is a little concerning having an adapter stick out like that. I think I'll get an extension cable to take care of that. Now, I'll take a composite RCA cable and plug one end of it to the adapter and the other end to the TV.
To get audio into the television, I used a 3.5mm to RCA cable. Plug the 3.5mm side of the cable to the audio jack of the I.O. board. Then take the other side of the cable and plug the RCA jacks onto the television. I'm personally going to need an adapter that converts the left and right cables to a single channel, or else I'm going to have issues with games that use stereo. Finally, it's time to turn on the Mr. FPGA. Success. I must say, I'm really impressed with the image quality. It's a lot sharper than I expected. It's something that a video or capture card cannot fully show you correctly, and you must see for yourself. The Mr. Menu text is pretty sharp, much sharper than I expected. Everything is completely readable and easy to navigate. As far as games are concerned, they look great. While on a PC monitor and HDTV, you can easily see the individual pixels on the game's graphics. On a consumer CRT, the low res nature of it and the way the technology works, pixels are smoothed out, so jagged edges on graphics are greatly reduced. Another side effect of using a consumer CRT is the blending that occurs to help some games mimic transparency effects. The most famous example of this is the waterfall in the first stages of Sonic the Hedgehog. On a sharp display, like a PC monitor or HDTV, you can clearly see that the waterfall is made up of alternating lines. Those alternating lines cover the background, and in between them, you can see the background. But if I view that same scene on a CRT, you don't see alternating lines. What you see is a waterfall that you can see right through. The CRT actually blends together the background and opaque waterfall lines from the game to create the illusion of transparency. Games that make heavy use of dithering are also affected when you use a display that is too sharp. A CRT blends dithered colors to make gradients smoother, whereas on an HDTV, you can notice the dithering. So how does the image quality compare to real hardware? Well, here is Samurai Showdown using a real Neo Geo connected through composite. Now, here is Samurai Showdown emulated on a Raspberry Pi also connected through composite. Now, here's the game through the Mr. FPGA with the composite adapter. Except for the Neo Geo output being a little darker and the Raspberry Pi set to an incorrect aspect ratio and the Raspberry Pi's emulation timing being a bit off, I honestly don't see much of a difference. Do you see any difference? So I'm quite happy with the composite adapter. It's a bit expensive, but seeing just how good the games looked on my CRT made the price worth it. Now, some of you might be thinking that I should upgrade to a PVM, but I would personally need to see how games look on a PVM for myself. From everything I've read, PVMs seem to be too sharp for my needs. I've read that the blending for dithering and the pseudo transparency effects do not work on PVMs. I know Mr. has composite blending for some cores which will mimic those effects on a PVM, but I'm afraid the pixels and jagged edges will be more pronounced on a PVM. And when I was looking for a CRT, I wanted something that was similar to what I grew up with. At the moment, if I want sharper retro visuals on a CRT, I would rather skip the PVM and get a PC CRT monitor instead. That may change if I ever get to see a PVM in person, but right now, I am extremely happy with the results I'm getting with my current CRT. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.